Hey friends, welcome to episode 16 of Spiritual Crypto. I have been remaining true, I guess, to my, for, for the most part, to my intention to just like only record these when I truly felt compelled, not because I had some set schedule that dictated that I had to do it at certain time intervals or like do it doing that out of a fear-based motivation or something. And I kind of feel like I have something to say now, um, but I don't know what it is exactly. I don't know. I mean, I just feel like, so, okay. So it's December 22nd, 2022. I am currently in Corsham, England, this little town in the Cotswolds, uh, not too far from Oxford, I guess. And um, I'm in this pub that's really old and it's cute, but it's super snug. And my dog is with me and I don't really know what I'm doing. I kind of know what I'm doing, I guess. I mean, in reflecting, I think it's, I think I'm trying to follow some sort of energy that is coming to me. Um, but I think I'm confusing this sort of energetic need that I have with like physical place. So I gave up my house in California. Um, it was just a rental, but I, I left there in early October with the intention of coming to Europe. Specifically, I was thinking I'd look at houses in Italy because you can buy houses there super cheaply and I just need a home. And that's been so elusive for this whole life. Like I, I'm wondering if I'm just supposed to accept that I'm not gonna find a home on earth because I just don't feel like I belong here. <laughs> I mean, I really feel, you know, I feel like I'm from somewhere else or something. And um, yeah, so I'm wondering if the lesson is just going to be about letting go of an attachment to trying to find that because, I mean, I'm going to be 39 years old in April and like, I haven't even really caught like a whiff of that yet. <laughs> um, I mean, I feel something, the closest I've felt to something like what I think that means is just with my dog. So I guess that's progress after a lot of healing work and stuff. Um but yeah, I, I just like gave up the house, went to Europe. I stayed in Tuscany for about three weeks and looked at some houses, but it just didn't feel quite right. Um, and then I just felt this compulsion to come to England then. And I, I, I knew I had a, I did have a plan to come here anyway, because there's a Vipassana center here that I wanted to go to. So I did a course over American Thanksgiving and I'm going to do another course there starting tomorrow, December 23rd, which like goes over through the new year and uh yeah and I've been kind of really freaking out I understand astrologically that there's healing stuff coming in now I think I think like I don't know <laughs> I'm so like not like a schooled astrologer or anything but I think that is it Jupiter no Jupiter's in Aries something is squaring Chiron I think it's actually is it the new moon tomorrow on December 23rd? I think that's right. I think it's squaring Chiron, the wounded healer. I mean, you know, it's like the more I learn about astrology, the more I believe in its legitimacy. And I certainly feel like old wounds that I know I've made progress on, um, but that plagued me for years are kicking back up. Like I used to live like this. I lived like this for years and I was, I had a lot less money then. So it was harder but this is still hard you know what I'm saying like I mean I'm I'm lucky I'm very lucky that I can like afford in our bullshit capitalistic society to stay at a place that's warm and I can have my dog with me and I can rent cars and whatever and travel around and you know that's cool but I'm reminded of the energy it takes to be planning things out you know maybe a week and a half or two weeks in advance and, um, yeah, it just really <laughs> like this feeling about not being able to find a home and never having felt that I had a home is super activated by that. And it's, it's related to this bigger, like the word they use of Vipassana courses is, San is Sankara, the, the wounding we've taken in that we haven't yet healed and released. And I'm, as far as I know, based on, you know, like my awareness and how, how developed it is to date, I know that uh, I have this enormous Sankara about like 
not getting my needs met, like basic needs, like heat and shelter and stuff. And I think that's from past lives. Um, and yeah, it's just very triggered by my, my current situation. But I just felt like I had to get out of that house. Like there were crazy kind of physical things going on. Like my lymph nodes were very um, inflamed for months. And, um, and I gained weight inexplicably and, uh, talked to, I tried to find a bunch of people to help me out with that. And finally found a doctor who said that she most often saw that those symptoms when there was mold in a house and, uh, the house I was in was old for Los Angeles. It was like a hundred years old. So I think that was part of it because when I left the house, my lymph nodes, the swelling went down within something like two weeks or something. It was kind of crazy. So yeah, there was something in that house that I think had a physical effect, but also just the energy of the house and um, the energy of the landlords was freaking me out. (laughs) And I, it just felt like I needed to get out to, like, it was like I was stuck. And it's weird too, because it's like it, to the external, from the external perspective, it looked like a nice house and is a cool house in a lot of ways. But I just felt very sure that I needed to get the fuck out of there. And I didn't have a next destination in mind. I went to Martha's Vineyard for a little while, which I love. Um, I hope someday I'll be fortunate enough to like own a place there. And I bought some land in Massachusetts earlier this year. And I, I didn't consciously realized it at the time but I think I did that because of some want of proximity to Martha's Vineyard specifically I like the the wallpaper on my computer used to be like Judy Bloom's house in Martha's Vineyard I think I associate her energy a lot with Martha's Vineyard and I like reread Summer Sisters while I was there and stuff or I probably read it for I don't know like the seventh or eighth time or something but it really does feel like kind of a magical place I think So I was there for a while, but it was like all this stuff, like this logistics stuff was conspiring just to make things really difficult. And I was so tired because I did everything myself. And also with all this stupid health stuff going on, like my energy was all fucked up and there's hypothyroid stuff going on. And I was just like so depleted and, uh, and I didn't know exactly how to fix it. Like I got like hormone panels and stuff that just showed that like like hypothyroidism like clinically um and apparently the keto diet fucked stuff up for me and I didn't know that that was going to be a thing so that's something I want to share more about it seems like you know three years into the keto diet especially if you're a femme person um it can really mess with your hormones and cause problems and the weight gain was probably related to that too because my metabolism was so out of whack So I don't know. I feel like this sounds too self-involved or something, (laughs) but it's just like, I feel like I can't, I don't have the platform I need, the foundation I need to really um, like make a big leap or like, it just feels like I'm kind of caught in this. It's like the, like I said, I'm fortunate because I have more money now. But it reminds me of that, some graph I've seen, is what's it called, like the poverty trap or something? That sense that when you don't have your basic needs met, in that case in a monetary sense, um, then you're just trapped in this sort of like narrow place forever. And I I know that there have been studies that show that it it shortens your ability to long-term plan. Like it actually impacts your brain when you're stuck in that poverty mindset. And it's like there's some version of home not like a non-monetary version of that that I'm going through kind of um and like uh yeah just the sense of like not having the support that I need around me so that I can thrive and it makes sense in in that that's so much of what seeds is about like seeds is about offering that and providing that for people especially for people who haven't been able to find it through you know like if you didn't grow up in a family that provided it like I didn't Um, trying to build that community together so that we can offer that support for everyone who engages so that you can have that sense that you have enough of a enough ground to stand on so given that it makes sense that I would have to personally 
completely excise all of that in me um, in order to really shine that energy through seeds. And I know I did a lot of releasing of that in previous years or else, you know, I wouldn't have been able to level up in terms of having more monetary resources and whatever. Um, but yeah, it's still this emotional and home related thing is still there. And I, so I, I don't know. So I'm here, I'm about to do this meditation course, this Vipassana course tomorrow. Um, and then I just feel like I want to get the fuck out of England. Like I wanted to get out of the States that felt right. But I think I was actually, like I said earlier, like following the energy of, I was thinking it was about finding a home, but I think it's actually this idea that the home, the sense of home is going to be in other beings, like specifically when I marry Max Mangella. <laughs> this is so embarrassing to talk about, but I think that I do believe, I mean, I kind of believe that I will end up with him, <laughs> but whatever person has the embodiment of this energy, whoever it ends up being, I think that it is, I think I went to Italy and England specifically because I was following that energy. He happens to have that energy, I think, but it's because I think the person that will feel like home to me, and it feels like it is an individual um, and probably would be like a partner, has those energies in them like something like Italian energy and something like English energy. Um, and I didn't know that consciously coming into this trip. I really thought I was going to Italy to literally like buy a house. Um, so I don't feel like I, I kind of just want to get the fuck out of here now. But I also know that's still the pattern when I'm in this unhealthy energy where I'm just going and like fucking, you know, finding the next place to stay two weeks out and whatever. I understand that it's it's just like this running energy and it comes from a depleted place and um, it's just kind of hard to stick my head up above the water while I'm in it and hopefully at this Vipassana course I'll really clear a lot of this out and it you know it wouldn't surprise me I mean I can't you can't be attached to a certain outcome or it doesn't work because then you're not doing Vipassana correctly um, but Based on my previous experience, it makes sense that this particular unhealthy pattern, this unhealed wound would be coming up this strongly now um, and would be this close to the surface. Therefore, it's like logical that, you know, like it's it's close to clearing out if I just actually do Vipassana when I go to the course and let it release. And when I woke up this morning, the last couple mornings, I think, I had a ton of fear coming out of my body, specifically like out of my heart. And uh yeah, and I was just able to sit with it and do Vipassana and like feel like it was releasing. So yeah, that felt encouraging because the you know so much of this unhealthy pattern is about fear. It's about the sense that I have to keep going <laughs> and keep whatever, it, or else I'm going to be like freezing outside in the rain or something. It's it's very much like it feels like it's of a past life where I was homeless or um, starving or something like that. It's feels like it's that sort of pattern and this is a deeper layer of it than I've seen surface in the past and the way I'm handling it is more evolved than I would have been in the past <laughs> like at least marginally um, but I really started freaking out when I first got to this particular inn which was on Sunday or Saturday last Saturday like five days ago um, and uh, yeah it's just coming up pretty hard and strong I don't know and then couple with that, I'm reflecting on, I was listening to this astrologer last night as I was going to sleep and she was talking about how strange it is that, you know, like yesterday was in the Northern Hemisphere, the, the winter solstice, which is the shortest day of the year, obviously. And it's, um, you know, it's like the pinnacle of this idea of us moving through this cycle of hibernation. And so this astrologer was saying that it's weird that we like at least in the western world especially with like this christian influence or whatever it's really a capitalist influence i guess christmas at this point and stuff um but uh it's weird that we have this huge emphasis on like getting all this shit done by the end of the year and like buying shit and whatever and it's like this hectic time and like businesses are sending a bunch of emails to try and sell more shit by the end of the year and i 
it was interesting to hear her say that because I've been really feeling like like I haven't wanted to push things out about seeds. It just hasn't felt right lately. It felt forced. Whereas in the past, I would have had a more, I guess, fear-based approach where I would have thought like, no, this is the giving season. This is when con- people are conditioned to give. Like we need to make sure to take advantage of doing like initiatives to be a part of that at the end of the year. And I just didn't want us to do that now. It's like I just couldn't force it and it didn't feel good to force it. And it didn't feel like it would be very helpful either. Like it just felt like maybe a little bit would come in, but it just it just feels like it'd be like like pushing a boulder when I could just turn in a different direction and just see this sort of like different way of being that had ease to it that would reach a lot more people and would reach people that really resonate with the mission of what Seeds is and this idea of building abundance for all through giving. So I haven't done that. Like we didn't do like marketing blah initiatives or whatever. And um, I've just been reflecting and I mean, we're staying on top of the day to day task as ever um but there's it's just like there's this unknown in the future like the seeds product still needs to improve but it's it's like through this energy I also can't find the right like path forward still it's been months now to clearly see how to build these improvements that we need and we we need them before the next cryptocurrency cycle which at this point, I mean, I think we're probably right around the lows now. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I mean, the next Bitcoin happening is supposed to be like March 30th, 2024 at the earliest. Um, and I also have a, a, what are those called? Releasing of the bond. Is that what they're called? Um, right around that time as well. Loosening of the bond, LB. Um which again, I don't really know what I'm talking about, but my understanding is that for me, it'll be about money. Um, and, uh, and then like Jupiter's, Jupiter's going to go into Taurus and hit your Uranus. And, uh, that could, there's a likelihood that that would be about cryptocurrency too. And I think that's also around that time in 2024. So basically my thinking is that not just because of the astrology, but because of fucking like just you know, it just like seems very clear that seeds needs to be as ready as possible for the next big surge in the cryptocurrency sector because we saw big changes in this last cycle, which kicked off in early 2020. That's when like my life started to change economically and whatever. Excuse me. And I just still don't see how best to get there or who best to support there. And I think it's just clearing out the Sankara that's going to be a big part of it because it feels like it's blocks in me. And I and I think about that a lot too. Like, I mean, I used to think about that even with like Uber. Maybe I've said this before. Before they got rid of the guy that, like the co-founder who was super toxic. Um, what was his name? It started with a T, I think. But yeah, I used to think about that. Like how Uber's problems before they fired that dude <laughs> were like extensions of the stuff in him that he hadn't healed. And then it showed up in his business in ways that were really damaging. And when they got rid of him, that energy wasn't there as much anymore, I think. So yeah, as like the founder of Seeds, I think about my own unhealed shit and how like part of the importance of healing it has to do with understanding that by extension of the fact that I started Seeds and have been the main driver of it for years, um, you know, my shit's going to show up in what I made. So as I'm healing my stuff, it will make for a healthier environment for seeds as well. And I think that's really important, um, especially when it's a social good initiative that's about community like seeds is. If it were just, not just, but if it were like a piece of art or something or just an expression of my state at this time, that'd be a very different thing. Um, But this is sort of like an organism that is its own thing 
And I know I pour energy into it. And because it's about supporting and helping others with their own healing and, you know, like in finding their own abundance, um, it, it's helpful if I'm able to do that work for myself so that I'm really on that wavelength and sharing that wavelength. So, yeah, I don't know. I just feel unclear, but it kind of feels like it wants me to be unclear at the moment. Um, I mean, I feel some clarity about like what's releasing now and what's coming on the surface. I did get this sense that I should go to Detroit after I leave here. I've always liked Detroit and I looked at buying houses there in January of last year, like the most beautiful month of the year to go to Detroit. But yeah, I literally physically went there with my dog in a car and looked at a house, um, like went in, looked at several houses, but there was only one I went in and like really examined closely. That was my, I was most interested in, but the realtors were assholes and I just didn't even want to deal with, like that seemed like a sign that it wasn't right. Um, and, uh, yeah, it just Detroit resurfaces. I was thinking that it had to do with my family before, like, cause my, my mom grew up in a suburb of Toledo, Sylvania, Ohio, which is I think like 30 minutes from the Michigan border, maybe an hour and change from Detroit or something like that, maybe a little longer. And then anyway, it's just like that part of the world. I mean, the only happy memories really from my childhood were at her parents' house in Sylvania. And I just think Detroit is cool. I don't know. It's like, it's just cool. <laughs> it's like, there's no other American city like that. And uh, I think the people are cool. I just like it. And also you could buy a house there that's like livable for $50,000. And you can't really do that in any other cities in the States. Um, so yeah, I was freaking out more the other day, not knowing what I was going to do like where I was going to go after the Vipassana course and stuff. And then Detroit came in and I want to check it more because I feel like I have, I brought tarot cards with me, like three different decks with, I don't have that much stuff with me, but I brought my tarot cards and uh, yeah, I want to meditate and feel like, you know, clear more stuff out to make sure that that truly feels um, like an unblemished decision. Like, for sure the right way to go that isn't sort of coming from some other motivation that's less healthy but it feels good thinking about it feels good thinking about going there feels good even though it's fucking <laughs> been going there in January um so I don't know because this compulsion is kind of coming up again and, and maybe it is that's the thing I'm using the word compulsion which doesn't have a healthy connotation maybe it is right because it's coming up again a year later and it doesn't seem to be sort of um, as connected to place and family, like since I don't have contact with my family of origin, except I still talk to aunts and uncles a bit, um, but my immediate family I haven't had contact with, occasional emails from my mom about like other family members dying. Um, yeah, this just makes me kind of think that it's something else. It's not like about trying to recapture like the four happy childhood memories I have or whatever. It feels like it's something drawing me to that place I guess I don't know I don't know where on else to go on earth right like nowhere else feels right I kind of wanted to go to Zurich I do want to go to the Canary Islands at some point because I've read that that's like there are theories that that's where Atlantis used to be and I wanted to go there and kind of see if it I felt anything but it doesn't feel like I don't want to go there now particularly um, so I think Detroit is where I'll go. I looked at Toronto a bit because it, like when I was in Toronto last September, um, I went up there for the film festival and in, in all my travels ever, I think, I mean, the nicest people seem to be there. Um, New Yorkers are nice, but it's sort of a different thing. And New York feels too it makes me think of like this Nora Ephron essay where she talked about how like New York is hard to visit, but easy to live in. And yeah, it just feels like I'd have to climb over that wall to like get back into New York. And it'd be better to do that when I have more money later on. Like if I could just buy a place or something that would be sick and then it would open its arms more. Yeah. So it doesn't feel like New York is right right now. 
and Toronto didn't feel right either. I don't know. So I was just thinking Detroit. So yeah, this just shows how much energy this is taking to this sort of sense of not knowing where the fuck to go and then having to fucking figure out physical logistics and whatever in those places. And it's, it's keeping me from kind of fully enjoying what's unique about the different places I've been in as well. Um, my the depletion I'm feeling is part of it too. <sighs> I don't know. It just feels like everything's a hologram. Like everywhere I go, the way I'm living is pretty much the same. And it's all earth. There's like, there are different challenges in different places depending on how much infrastructure there is. And like, if I speak the language and whatever. Um, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I just feel kind of stuck in this energy. And as though the external energies also are trying to tell us to chill right now. So I'm trying to be cool with that. Um, yeah, 2022 in some ways was a, an important year for seeds. We got the biggest single gift we've ever gotten. It was like $162,000 for Ukraine. And then we had trolls attacking us who didn't fucking understand what seeds is and what it does. So that was interesting and kind of, I think, I think it was actually sort of damaging in a sense because, well, I mean, this is more unhealed stuff in me, but I know I still have this pattern in me about like not wanting to be seen yet not wanting to be super visible. Um, and as seeds continues to grow, you know, there are going to be larger gifts and more visibility. And that was like a taste of just like, oh, fuck. Like, if we get larger gifts, is it going to mean we're going to have assholes like fucking bullying us? Because that is part of the reason I'm not, I'm avoiding that visibility. I know it's past life stuff too. I think it's specifically Atlantis stuff this idea that it was dangerous when I was visible in the past and the other people got hurt. Um, so that's another thing to heal and release slash accept. Um, but yeah, that was a big deal, you know, that, you know, was a big gift and it would have seemed super enormous like a year and a half before that or something. Um, yeah, and we made some product improve improvements, um, and we just saw, I mean, in the cryptocurrency sec sector at large, we saw a lot of collapse um, in and of basically projects that had bad centralized practices, and so that's a good clearing out, but then it's also, it becomes this thing of like, does that mean we need to really focus on? helping people understand like how seeds is distinct. I mean, obviously that's important, but like when I started teaching the cryptocurrency and how to trade it course, my strategy or whatever was about recognizing that cryptocurrency itself was well enough known by that point um, that like, you know, I could share whatever the skills I developed and people had heard the word cryptocurrency enough and recognized that it had gone up enough as a sector and stuff that they felt like they should probably start paying attention to it. And so that was a way to keep seeds going, to bring in income for seeds and also to help people like to share about what seeds actually is. Um, and I think that was a smart idea. But then it's like when the cryptocurrency sector is down as it is now, um, you know, people are more freaked out and they're not, it's, it's funny. It's, it very much seems like it moves like the market. Like once the market starts going back up again, I'm sure we'll sell many more courses and uh, that's going to be the time when it's less valuable because the market will already be going back up. So it's, it's kind of interesting to see this like idea that most people are afraid to buy low um, also showing up in terms of how this cycle works for the course too. Um, yeah. So there's more infrastructure to build. There's more product improvement to make. Hopefully, as I clear out more of the stuff through Vipassana, I'll start attracting the support that I need to just sort of naturally make those adjustments. Um, I think we got a, a good a year, a year to really get things ready for scaling and then 
can fo- I can focus more on messaging and stuff too. I want to get out and like talk to people again. Like I used to give speeches and whatever, like do speaking engagements and public talks and stuff pretty regularly. And I really liked doing it because I could feel people. I could actually connect with them. And like, I think they could feel that I love them from the stage. And that was just, it was rewarding. Um, but then obviously with COVID that didn't happen so much and it just hasn't felt right to prioritize that more recently in part because the sector's down too. So I'd like to get into that again, but it'd be good, you know, to have a great person supporting me in that who's maybe helping to set up those arrangements and stuff. Um, like a PR person, I guess. But yeah, even when I've tried, it's like this energy, it's like I'm just running into kind of either unsupportive or hostile energy when seeking support. Um, And I know it's just this unhealed thing because that was my experience being in my family. And it's not released yet. So yeah, I mean like the last time I tried to talk to PR people, they were fucking real shitty. (laughs) And like, and it was supposed to be like a social good, social justice PR firm as well. And it was just like, that's all I've been attracting. Just like people who are dicks and I didn't, I know the world is as you are, <laughs> like, but also I think that, I don't know, I'm trying to understand this too, because I know I have like the gifted adult whatever thing, which means you're perceiving things in a different way than a lot of other people. And I understand that I'll take things in or observe things or notice things um, that can often be really difficult for me. And other people won't even know what the fuck I'm talking like they won't see what I'm experiencing at all they just won't perceive it even when I try to explain it to them so that coupled with the strength of how difficult it can be for me in those situations plus they're complete like oblivious to what I'm talking about it's it's isolating frankly um and I tried reaching out to like gifted adult groups and stuff and like people either wouldn't reply or just like it wouldn't I got weird energy from this one person who like wanted me to pay with PayPal and I was like yo the founder like thinks that date rape is cool and that like women shouldn't vote I'd prefer not to use them and uh the response was weird so it's stuff like that like and but that's supposed to be like the gifted adult person who would understand that's not even a fucking gifted adult thing though like why should we support billionaires who think that women shouldn't vote? (laughs) Like that's part of what I mean, I guess. Like I've run into these energies where like I'm, it's just people that I can feel are not going to be receptive to something as obviously problematic as that. And then I'm the one that tells them that and then they're hostile in return. And that's totally my family experience though. So, I get, I mean, I get that that pattern's there. Um, And part of me must crave slash be attached to this idea of trying to wake up these people who just don't want to hear it and don't want to be supportive and are being hostile because part of me wishes my family would still do that. And, um, And it's also a way to not be as visible. You know, if I'm spending a bunch of energy doing that and if I'm spending energy not knowing where I'm going to be in two weeks or even shorter periods of time, you know, then I'm occupied so that I'm not becoming bigger and becoming more visible and bringing seeds to more people and working on creative projects like the film I'd like to make. I'm not, I don't feel like I have any creative like wherewithal right now um, from this energetic place. I just can't fucking, it's not accessible. And that was the beautiful thing at the last Vipassana course I did. Um, I still want to complete a like little mini series in the podcast where I talk about my experiences at various Vipassana courses. But then the one I did over American Thanksgiving like a month ago, I had a clearing at one point and so many creative ideas came in and, um, and I was aware of how related that was to not feeling negatively impacted by other people's stuff. Like at one point at that course, there was this guy who like, walked around really aggressively and loudly (laughs) and I was annoyed with him it's a silent course and then there was this other girl who sat close to me in the meditation hall 
who was super chaotic and had her shit everywhere and was just like blue, like really like kind of this like unhealthy feminine energy. Um, so that's kind of interesting, I guess, that I was sort of seeing expressions of the unhealthy masculine and that it was too aggressive and oblivious and then the unhealthy feminine and that it was too chaotic and oblivious, I guess. Um, and, uh, and so I was like annoyed with both of them. But after I had this clearing, I remember I was like walking down the little path next to the cottage I was staying in and the guy walked past me aggressively as ever. <laughs> and then the girl walked past too. And I just found them endearing. Like they were still doing their th- stuff where they were like, she was like Googling around and he was like, really like whatever like militant but I didn't it didn't bother me and then with that same clearing a bunch of creative ideas came in so I'm it felt like it was really showing me that uh when I completely clear this it's an empath thing like I'm feeling other people's stuff it wasn't just that that dude was loud and aggressive it was just that I could feel his pain and was distracted by it and then like would feel like kind of resentful that he hadn't that he wasn't aware of it enough to like not be putting it out at other people in that way, like at, like a med- meditation course. That's what all of us do versions of, you know, you're not aware until you're aware. So yeah, it's good to be reminded of that now. I'd like forgotten about it till I started talking here. Um, the creativity does seem like it actually is closer to accessibility than I'd been thinking, but this is a big thing to clear on top of it. This like sense that I can't find support anywhere and that I just, I'm so often running into the opposite of support when I'm releasing that and when I can get out of this energy of just going and just fucking land somewhere and like, man, and I hope I meet that person who I'm becoming more and more convinced is, is going to have that energy that actually feels like home. I know that'll help so much, but it feels like it's this catch 22 where in this lifetime I'm supposed to be independent and I'm supposed to do a lot of this stuff on my own. And then it feels like when I reach a certain point, it's, I think I'm going to have to make this film and go with the visibility there. That's when I'll actually connect with that person. So it's like I have to work this shit out myself. And you know what I'm saying? Like, I can just sense if I just had that energy around me consistently, like it would be through a, phys- a person you're physically near. Um it would help so much, but it's like I have to heal more stuff. So I'm bringing more of that energy through myself before it's going to let me even meet that person, I think. So it's like, then it just feels like a bummer. Like, OK, I'm just going to keep living in this this way that feels so isolated and fucking not fun. <laughs> like that was the other thing. Like when that, I had that clearing at the Vipassana course in November and I was having all those creative thoughts, things seemed fun. Like I was thinking thoughts that amused me and like yeah it was just so that yeah I guess it's closer to availability than I've been fearing and assuming based on my experience of the last several years where I've like had zero fun (laughs) for a long time it feels like um yeah I just want to try and I need to remember to appreciate this step in the journey as ever instead of just thinking so much again about some some destination that I feel desperate to get to which is just being in the energy of support really and then that understanding that you know physical things would align with it too like a a comfortable home and help with the projects I'm working on that's really elevating and so forth Um, so that's where I am right now saying all this stuff is kind of helpful yeah it's almost 2023 y'all the energy should be really different that year this coming year based on what I understand especially once we get past March um so there could be big changes I guess yeah and I can think back to my own experience right like things change so quickly and drastically in 2020 in ways that couldn't be anticipated at least by me um, that can happen at any time. Things can change at any time. It can just feel hard to believe when you're in a pattern for what has felt like a long time that you, that is an unhappy pattern, you know, and that's kind of where I feel like I am. That's the thing about v- Vipassana too, is like, 
it's it's the the practice of vipassana is awareness of change you're meditating on the fact that change is constant and you do that using your physical body and uh the thing that i struggle with is the sense of time i get like because i you know it's like i intellectually understand that change can happen and is happening constantly and like like our cells are changing i don't know atoms are constantly changing whatever this body that we think is the same is actually constantly changing and uh i get that and i can feel it when i meditate um but I'll get stuck still. I don't have that understanding of a Nietzsche of constant change when it comes to like years of some shitty situation that I don't like. <laughs> Even though I know in the past, sometimes abrupt change has happened that was way positive. So yeah, being able to clear that through Vipassana will be good as well. Um, Cause I'm not being a quantumist about it. I'm just like, this fucking sucks. And I want it to be over. And I still wish I knew. I wish we had a better word to use than sucks because it's just disparages people who, suck on penises but nothing feels as sharp as that in the way that I think we need a word to feel (laughs) so I don't know y'all I hope you have a happy new year and if you're celebrating some other holidays I hope you enjoy them I know they can be really hard for a lot of people I definitely don't remember happy holidays (laughs) with family so I can deeply relate to that if that's what you're experiencing experiencing or are afraid you're going to experience so I want to send empathy for that um but yeah coming into 2023 I know the energies are changing I keep seeing that 2026 is supposed to be an amazing year and I think 2025 is supposed to be great as well so hopefully not too much longer seeing Elon Musk like fuck everything up and seeing the Tesla Tesla stock drop a lot is really funny and validating and uh I feel like it is, you know, indicative of the imminent collapse of kind of everything that person represents regarding patriarchy and white supremacy and capitalism and just dumb propping up of people with those sorts of privileges who totally don't deserve it because they're incompetent. Um, Yeah. So it's fun to see that. That makes me feel better. That makes me think that maybe that change is happening, you know, could be coming in more swiftly than I, than it can seem like when everything's such a drag, you know what I'm saying? But, but we'll see. I appreciate all of you. Thanks for listening. Um, If you'd like to help someone in need through Seeds and get Seeds cryptocurrency and thanks, you can always do that at seedsgives.com slash help. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you next year. Thanks. Bye.